Hello everyone, this is Werner with another quick tutorial on how to use chops to create secondary motion on flying arrows. We're going to use a simple lag um, operator to, to create some of the, the jiggle on these arrows. And um, yeah, let's have a look at what it will kind of look like. It's fairly simple. We fire off a bunch of particles, copy these arrows to it, and then add a little bit of jiggle to some of them or all of them. Okay, let's jump in. So I started off by creating a height field with a nice little ridge that I could use to emit these particles from so I have a little bit of a higher point there then let's start here at the beginning created a grid simple grid and use the edit top to just to pull it out a little bit and to shape it to the contour of that hill there next up I use the remesh just to create more points on it and then added normals simple normals on the points the next step I wanted to control the direction vector of the particles in the viewport so I just made a duplicate of the emitter object scaled a little bit and moved it out into space and then plug that into the second input of an attribute VOP. So in here I brought in my my object, the emitter objects points, the points there, and I imported the points of the second input, which is the secondary object, did a subtract on that, normalize it, and then just created a multiply node there just so I could control the length of the vector. After that, I use the point velocity set to from attribute and then using that normal. So the normals basically are now pointing towards my object there. So if I move them or move it, then the normals will always point to these points. All the points on the emitter object will always point to all the points on the duplicate object. So I then logically brought that in as the normals and then created an attribute adjust vector set to length only and multiplied it to get the um, velocity vectors that was generated with a point velocity. Oh, and I added a little bit of cool noise just to flare it open so I get random directions there. But I can still manipulate this object and that's where my direction vectors or velocity vectors will point towards. Next step was to delete the normal since I didn't want that normal to affect the particles being born on my object, the emitter object. Then I created a clip, which I animated just to reveal the emitter object, so that all the particles doesn't just fire off at once. Um, and then next, I created a pop network. Brought in the object, um, didn't do anything here other than setting the emission only to happen from frame 1 to 25 and then stop emitting. Emitting 100 on the impulse count. Next was a pop drag with a very low air resistance, just a tiny amount. And then I used the pop collision detect uh, to detect the flaw that height field that I created which I brought in there and then on under the behavior tab I set the response to stop um, and also just 
color heads to red so that when we look through the camera and we play this the points come flying and they hit and they turn red and that's where they stop then I just use the attribute delete to get rid of this uh, color so the next step was to create a line so let me just explain this um, I have a line with two points a tip and I'm just going to create a, a tip right over there and then another point on the tail end there so what will happen is as the the arrow comes flying in and it hits the ground that will turn red and stop the first point but the second point the tail end will then start to jiggle this is where we're going to use the um where we're going to use chops so this will basically wiggle back and forth until it stops and then later on i will create a new normal vector from this point to wherever the tail end is and use that on a copy to so uh, to copy to points where we're going to copy an arrow onto them all right so this is basically just the line that I created. As you can see, there's only two points on there. There's a group for the tip that I created right there. And then I colored that pink just so that I could see if my orientation or direction was correct. Then there's a group tail. That's a tail end. And then that was copied to the particles and as you can see they all come flying in direction is good and we have those groups on all the points and all tips and all the tails next step was to just select every second with a group of uh, group by range uh, every second primitive so that I could split because I didn't want all the arrows to wiggle but uh, jiggle but only half of them here i can control that so um this group there is group every second one and then i split them so half goes just straight into a hit and the others will go into a chop so here i export it into a chop network use a simple geometry to bring it in i'm bringing in the rx ry and rz which is the rotation and i'm only bringing in that group tail on the arrows and this is where i'm adding a lag with a little bit of overshoot and here you can drive the overshoot so the higher the value logically the more sway you will ha have on that in tail and since this will only happen on the in group um, we can draw our vector later our normal that we're going to use to copy the arrows on all right and there i'm just exporting again uh, bringing it into a channel sop this is where we bring in that group again with the lag on applied um, again on the rotation and everything is set to animate it all right fairly simple so this is then what you will get they come flying in some will just hit and some will jiggle and this affects the length of the curve and this is why i didn't want to copy arrows and do it on the arrow itself but rather just get those points where we can now split that group again we can have the tips hitting the ground as well as the ends or tails doing their jiggle
both of these goes into another attribute VOP, which we will then recalculate normals. So we bring in the tip, which is this coming in, and then we import the second in input, which is the tail end. Here we do another subtract, normalize again, and then I just did a bind export with an attribute called dir direction. Um, since I wasn't sure if I wanted to manipulate that uh, normal any further, otherwise I could have gone straight into normal there. So now we have a normal attribute or normals rather between these two and this points these points toward from the tip towards the tail end and very hard to see but you can barely see the jiggle here but over the length of an arrow that works really well then i have an attribute randomized just to randomize the scale um, very slightly wasn't really necessary but yeah did anyway uh, and then I just created the orient so that I have an up vector um, so that I could control uh, just a random rotation uh, on along the shaft so that they don't all face the same direction. Lastly, I've got an attribute delete where I just kill the color altogether. And now I just copy my arrow onto those points and that will pick up the new normal that I created with that jiggle applied just want to make sure that I've got that right there so the arrow was very simple I'm just going to dive in there it's just a simple shaft a tube nothing special there then I have a a tip that I modeled very simple and then again just a very simple arrow or the feather rather did a bit of a scale there then packed it and that was it now if we copy that onto our points it will pick up on those normals and we once again see these flying arrows they hit the ground and some of them will have that jiggle and some won't the nice thing about this is that no matter what direction you fire them they will if we spread this out much wider um, and the easiest would be just to scale up my secondary Go even wider now we get a little bit more of a uh, way let's look at those velocities now you can see they spread out much wider actually increase that some more and then fire away so the lag will happen depending on the direction that we fire these at so right out there they will still fall through the floor now but yeah so the lag will always the overshoot will always be in the direction of the arrow that's being planted in the ground so let's just scale that down again much closer together There you go.
anyway i hope somebody finds this and it helps them um i had fun doing this and just trying to figure it out it really wasn't that hard and um i guess it's not very accurate but it it, it will definitely get away with it um, especially if you have so many arrows hitting and sp uh, having that lag on there all right hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you in the next one enjoy <laughs>